I want to show you a little bit about how to do this forces in motion basics lab. Um, there's a bunch of different parts I'm asking you to do. So the link I give you should take you to this page. You just click on this. It'll open up. And I'm going to ask you to go here to the activity marked friction. There's other activities, but this will allow us to do most things. So click on that. You see a crate here, a person who can push things, a bunch of check boxes. I think we want to have these all checked at the beginning. Initially, for activities A, parts A and B, you're going to need to move this slider to no friction. It knows it changes the surface to ice. When you add more friction, it gets something, I don't know, else, like a railroad track. But then it looks like there's rough stuff growing on it. I don't know what that is. But anyhow, for right now, it'll be ice. If you want to apply a force to this box, you can apply a force using this slider down here. And then it goes away when you're not showing that. And you can apply the force in either direction. If you want to apply constant force, you use these arrows to the left or to the right. The small arrow shows a push of one newton, and each time you click it, it increases it. The big arrow increases at 50. Notice you see a sum of forces and the applied force. Those will be the same in cases where there's no friction. So the other thing you can do, you can back off there if you want, adjust it like so. You could put another mass on top of this. I wouldn't do that during the simulations, but we'll try that later. If you keep applying a force, eventually it gets so much, ah, the person can't hold on anymore. So you can pause things. If you want to remove this and then put something else up, that motion will have stopped. So I'm going to ask you to do certain things in uh, part A. In part B, we're going to have different amounts of push on things. So for part A, it's the box with no friction. Um, just some general observations. Part C, you're also going to have no friction, but you're going to put different objects. So, for example, you have a 50 kilogram object, and then you apply 50 newtons of force. You want to see what happens. Okay. And now, if we reset that, now let's say do the same thing 50 newtons of force on this. Um, you could decide how much force you want to have, if you want to have the full force, which kind of makes sense. If you go all the way to 500 newtons for all these things. Pushing a poor kid around. If you want to just max it out at 500 newtons and leave it there, you could do that. Won't be long before she's zooming along. Okay, and then if you do reset, notice that all these things reset and friction resets. So the last parts of the lab are parts D and E are things with friction. And those are fairly detailed. So there's a lot of questions I have in there about recording observations and so forth. There's a data table and things like that. So I would call this a low friction. That's no friction, but that's low, medium, and high. It'll default back and start with medium. But again, no matter what you do, you want to make sure um, that you display all these boxes. So if we apply 50 newtons here, you notice the friction is 50 newtons, so you're not going anywhere. 100 newtons. Now, for whatever reason, with this amount of friction, it says 94 newtons of friction, 150 newtons of applied force. So we actually are moving a little bit, accelerating a little bit, rather. If you stop applying that force, you notice the object slows down, which kind of makes sense. Keep an eye on what happens to the frictional forces when this gets down to zero meters per second. It's kind of interesting. And once it's stopped, you don't need friction anymore to oppose the motion. So hopefully that helps you out a little bit with what you need to do um, with some of these. Again, this button will clear things out. This button will pause the simulation. If you move objects on or off, it will automatically reset the speed at zero. 
Hope that helps.